Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. We've looked at many old lenses on this channel. We've looked at lenses like this old Indostar 22, the lovely old collapsible from Russia. We've looked at lenses like this one, the Jupiter 8, another Russian lens here mounted on the Zorki 3. We've looked at Zuiko lenses. We've looked at the modern Chinese manual lenses that are specifically made for mirrorless. And they kind of hark back to the manual days of photography. But the lens we're going to look at today is the simplest of the lot. This is as simple as it gets. This is absolutely basic. It's not possible, I don't think, to get any simpler in lens design. And we're going to do it using this body cap. It's an M42 body cap. And our other vital component. Not a jam jar, but the lid from a jam jar and we're going to put these two things together and we're going to make from them a pinhole lens. Pinhole lenses have been around for hundreds of years, possibly thousands of years. They were used, as I understand it, in the very earliest camera obscurers, which was a great big room which would it was essentially a giant camera with a small hole in one wall and a place to project the image on the wall opposite. So in a camera obscura you can see everything that's outside and it was quite a cool thing. Whoever first found out that a tiny little hole can focus light deserves well, they certainly deserve one of these lenses, that's for sure. It was an absolutely fantastic discovery. And as I say, who knows how long it's been around for. It could have been thousands of years. It's a natural property. It may well have been noticed over those years. However, we're going to apply the principle today. So come with me on a journey of adventure and simplicity as we make a pinhole lens for the Sony A7. So to make our pinhole lens, we need a few bits and pieces. We need the jam jar lid. We need our body cap. We need a power tool. And we need some of these drill bits. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our body cap and we're going to drill a hole straight through the center there. When you're drilling a hole, the best thing is to start with a small size drill. And once you've made your hole, the initial hole, then bore it out using a larger size drill. We'll also need some packing to put underneath the body cap as we drill through it. That way you don't get to mark your table or wherever you're working. So let's do that now. So when we're drilling, we need to try and find the center of the body cap. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly dead bang on in the center because we're gonna put a plate behind it with the actual pinhole in it. So the initial hole that we're making the body cap needs to be central, but it doesn't have to be absolutely precisely exact. It just needs to be near enough. So we'll find roughly the center and apply a bit of pressure and initially just give a little touch on the power just to make an initial mark. And we're actually a bit off center there, so I'm gonna try again. So 
So there's our initial hole and we have gone a little bit off centre but that doesn't matter. We'll now enlarge it and once we've enlarged it we'll draw out the edges so it's pretty much a central hole. So we've now got our larger drill bit in the drill and we're going to enlarge that hole in the lens cap. Now of course I don't need to tell you this could be dangerous you're using a power tool you've got the fingers quite near it. Please be very very careful while you're doing this. And this is what we end up with. You can see that the hole is not absolutely and exactly in the centre but that doesn't matter too much. I must admit this isn't quite as tidy a hole as I would have hoped for but it really doesn't matter because this is just the mounting plate for the actual lens if I can call it that itself which will be made from the jam jar lid. So now what we need to do is cut out a little square of metal from this jam jar top and of course on xenography we're using all the latest high-tech kit it's quite tricky this actually probably because I'm not really using the right tools for the job however in the spirit of Mr. Heath Robinson, we shall continue and very soon I feel convinced a square of metal will emerge from our labours. Hmm. And there we are, we've got a piece of metal. Well, it's not quite as square as we first thought it might be, but it's certainly a piece of metal. By the way, do be very careful doing this because metal is quite sharp once you start cutting it. Try and avoid any mishaps and any trips to the emergency room. And here we are, here's our little uh, rather circular metal square and we're going to stick that, well first we're going to make a hole in it, then we're going to stick it inside this lens cap. So let's make the hole. Right, so we've now got our components for our lens. We've got the body cap ready drilled, we've got our little piece of metal into which we're going to make a tiny little hole. There is advice about how to do this online. Uh, ideally it's best to use a tiny little jeweler's drill or a watchmaker's drill or some sort of implement like that that will make a very tiny but very smooth hole with no jagged edges. However, I don't have such a drill. And at Xenography, we do like the simple approach. So I am going to make a literal pinhole using this pin. So let's see how we get on. So here is our piece of metal ready to be pierced. And here is our pin ready to make our pin hole. So we'll pop it there in position and give it a little tap. So there's our initial attempt at a pinhole. It doesn't look too big. We don't want it too big, but I think it might be too small. So we're going to turn our metal over and give it a little tap from the other side. 
So there's our pinhole. It's very tiny, but when it comes to pinhole photography, the tinier the pinhole, the better. One thing we'll need to do now before we actually stick it to the lens cap is get rid of any raised portions just sitting around the edge of the hole there and by feeling it I can see the metal is protruding upwards slightly that's going to interfere with the light so we'll get some sandpaper and we'll smooth that off. So here's our sandpaper, here's our little lens so we're going to rub that on the sandpaper until we can't feel any more protrusions around the edge of the pinhole. Right, so there is our smoothed off pinhole. We can see by holding it up to the light that it is letting light through. So that looks a reasonable hole to start with. So the next step is to stick this piece into our lens cap. So what I'm going to do to find the position is I've got the metal behind the lens cap now. So I'm just going to do it by eye and see where the middle point, the centre point rather, seems to be. And I think that's about right. And again, all this needs to be is about right. It doesn't need to be absolutely exact and perfect. You will get an image, you know, even if your hole is slightly off center, you'll still get a reasonable image. So I'm gonna take the pin and trace that around, mark that point. Luckily this metal has got some paint on it. So if I take the pin and run it around the edge there, then when I come to stick it on, I know exactly where it should go. Contact adhesive, the pinhole lens maker's best friend. Now the trick with this stuff is to put on a thin layer. It doesn't need a lot of glue. So it's quite messy as well. So we get a thin layer on the lens at least what we laughingly refer to as a lens. I'm going to make sure not to get any adhesive on the part of the pinhole piece that will be seen, just because it'll look messy and not very good. Now the thing with contact adhesive is it has to go touch dry, so we're going to leave that for a few minutes. So I think we're now ready. We've got touch dryness on both the pieces. So I've just got to get this together now in the, in the way that it was marked. And it has to be right because this is a one time only thing. You can't undo contact adhesive very easily. So let's hope it works. And here is our pinhole lens. Look at that, ladies and gents. Is that not a fantastic thing? A simpler lens you cannot get. This is as simple and basic as it gets. And I'm looking forward to going out and shooting this lens. Luckily it's a bright day because pinhole lenses need a lot of light. You'll probably find that you need to whack up your ISO quite a lot. You'll probably also find that you need fairly long shutter speeds. This is a tiny, 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 tiny aperture. I don't know what it measures, but it's probably about f3 million or something. So you do need a lot of light for these lenses. And you may find that you can't capture, or rather you can't freeze movement as you can with a more conventional lens. Depends how bright the light is. But I'm going to take something else with me when I go out. This is a neutral density filter and it brings down the light entering the lens by about nine stops. Now you might say to yourself, gosh, why would you do that? You've got a lens that needs a lot of light anyway. Why would you cut the light down? Well, I'm going to try not to freeze movement, but to entirely lose any movement 
in the shots or at least just have trails of perhaps moving cars or moving people. You may have seen very old photographs taken in the 1880s, 1890s of street scenes. The streets always appear empty and that's because the films were not very sensitive and needed a huge amount of light to register an image. So anything moving, traffic or people, would just disappear and not emerge on the final image. So that's an effect I'm going to try and get today as well. So there we are, a fantastic little lens, very simple to make, very simple to use, wildly unpredictable in its results. Some are fantastic, some are awful, but it's the single simplest way there is of focusing an image onto an image capture medium. And for that reason, I think it's well worth trying. It's a lot of fun. It's a bit of an experiment. It's a bit of an adventure. I've certainly enjoyed it and I hope you have too. So that's it from me for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. Many, many thanks to everybody who tunes in and watches and to everybody who's subscribed so far. That's it from me for now and I will see you next time for some more xenography. Thanks for watching.